Thank you for attending the session today. Brilliant. Hopefully your participation will develop your confidence and skills in all aspects of your teaching and learning practice and ultimately have a positive impact on your learner experience. I'd like to ask you to share what you'd like to get out of today's session in the chat so that we can tailor the input as much as possible. So welcome to today's CPD session, Exploring Behaviour Management in a Learning Context. So my name is Helen Scanlon and I've included a picture so you can put a face to my voice. I'm part of NCFE's provider development team and our role is to support the teaching, learning and assessment of NCFE's qualifications. I'm going to briefly share a little bit about my background, which you can see on the screen now. I've worked in education for over 30 years, having taught and assessed learners and qualifications from pre-entry level to master's level. And I've experienced and managed a wide range of learner behaviour, especially in my pre-vocational work with adults and vocational work with younger learners in compulsory education. This session is interactive, so I will be sharing my own experiences and strategies, but I'm also going to be asking you to do the same. So the next step for me is to share the session objectives. We've got a busy 40 minutes or so, so we'll be moving on shortly. And as I said, please use the chat box to uh, add your questions or ideas and comments as we progress through the session. Any questions we don't have time to pick up, we'll do so in a follow up email with the slides. Uh, and as you can see on the, on the screen now, we have our session outcomes. OK, I'm going to start with a question about your starting confidence level, which we're going to launch in teams. On a scale of one to ten, with one being low and ten being high, how would you rate your current confidence level? It's anonymous, so please don't worry about being honest. Would so what are your thoughts and ideas? Thank you for the people starting to put their ideas in there. What kind of behaviour in an educational context creates challenge? Uh, use that link to Slido or pop your ideas in the chat box if you're unable to access the Slido. So thank you. Absences, absolutely. I'm just going to start reading through the ideas that are coming through now. Insubordination, lovely. Mental health issues. Yes, there does seem to be an increase in mental health and its impact on uh, education and progress. Bored, aggression, reluctance, brilliant. So anxiety and absences are coming up as um, really strong Yes, but what is that disruptive behaviour? Because disruptive can mean anything. Just thinking at entry level, the disruptive behaviour is quite different to master's level type of disruption. So what kind uh, of disruption do we do we mean? We've got lots of different answers coming in there. Thank you for that. Mobile phones, an absolute issue that seems to be coming through and has been for quite some years now in relation to how learners use them and how they... Um, prioritise their use of them. Brilliant. We'll just keep that going for a bit longer. This is some wonderful, uh, yes, and entering sessions, sessions stoned, yes. I've even had to take um, drugs off students before coming into the classroom because they were going to start using them in the classroom. So, yes, there was lots and lots of different challenges. I think we need an action research project or a best practice network just to deal with um, the type of ble challenging behaviour that we see in education now. So thank you for that. Yes, see themselves as experts, they don't prepare effectively, um, interruptive, absolutely lack of motivation. Vapes are coming in now as well as, as a disturbance to the classroom. Uh, very hot topic at the moment in the, in the news. OK, lovely, we will keep that going. Um, so thank you for that. Is there anything else in the chat, uh, Gemma, that hasn't... The seen. ones that were popped into the chat, Helen, I've, I've scanned the QR code and added them on Some so nobody gets missed out. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, parental or even supporting. So I'm just reading some of these that are coming in. Um, and then rudeness. It's it, That's all relative as well, isn't it? What one learner might see as rude, another learner might see as, you know, not a problem at all. So it's it's also perception as well. Excellent. Thank you so much for your input now. OK, we're going to move on. Uh, we're now going to clarify then what we mean by challenging behaviour. Uh, so again, in the chat, please pop your own personal definition of the term. Bring your experience into play here because learners from a range of ages, backgrounds, individual circumstances and attending different types and the level of courses will all bring different challenges. So please summarise the type of behaviours you've experienced 
to help you to define the term. This will also help others to understand what we deem as challenging behaviour and what it is in a range of different settings and circumstances. And I will be asking you to share ideas from across the range of experiences that you all bring. Gemma, do I have any definitions coming in yet, please? Just taking a look now. It's a big ask, isn't um, it, to, it to is. define, define that term? I think we're, we're still going with some of the um, suggestions of challenging behaviour. We've got yes. here, so challenging behaviour refers to any repeated pattern of behaviour that interferes with an individual's optimal functioning <laughs> or the functioning of others in their environment. Oh, wonderful. Sounds like someone's been uh, doing some research as well then. Uh. Yes. Uh, Behaviour that deliberately challenges your role as the lead teacher in the classroom and may yeah. halt and disrupt the learning of others. Yeah. Any behaviour that doesn't contribute to their learning or the learning of others or behaviour that distracts and causes an interruption to the flow of a class. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. OK, while they're coming in, I'm going to pop a couple of definitions on that we found in our uh, research. Uh, so the first thing you can see on the screen now, and this one isn't directly related to an educational context, but highlights that in psychology, challenging behaviour must be at a level of intensity and sustained to the point of threatening safety to meet the definition. We all know that in a teaching context or in a classroom environment, lower level challenging behaviour can be really disruptive and impact negatively on learning and learner progress. So things that we've already been talking about, wonderful. The second definition here is focused on education and aligns directly with my own experience and understanding of challenging behaviour in a classroom or learning setting. So learners will often subconsciously use behaviour to let others know what they're feeling or thinking. The plan for this session is to share top tips for managing behaviour in a range of contexts. So please be ready to share your own ideas and ask questions and maximise the sharing of knowledge in this virtual room. Anything else coming in on the chat for definitions before we move on, Gemma, please? Yes, we have. Let me have a look. So um, behaviour that distracts. The key characteristic is that these behaviours pose challenges to the inv individual themselves, caregivers, educators or others involved in their care or interaction. Yeah. Um, behaviour that impacts negatively on a learning environment. Yes. And behaviour that presents a barrier to learning. Yes. Brilliant. Okie dokie. Right. The next activity then is I'm going to show you a very quick video. Let me just pause it a second because it automatically went there. So this video is very short. It's only two or three. It's only a minute long. What I'd like you to focus on when you watch it, when watching it is what did the teacher do right or wrong? And what might you do? if you were that teacher. So I'll start it again. Please put your thoughts and ideas about what the teacher did right or wrong and what would you do if this was your classroom? Please pop your ideas into the chat. Hey, Caleb, cool it. Okay, everyone, I need you to get your papers out from yesterday. Those need to be on your desk. Caleb? If you do not have yours out, that will be a zero for this assignment. Caleb, I am not going to play these games with you today. Pick up the paper or go to the office. Pick it up. Caleb, I don't know what your problem is, but you will not be disruptive in my class. Do you understand what I'm saying? What y'all looking at? That's it. To the office. Out. Okay, that was the end of the very short video. As I said, what would you do? What did the teacher do, right or wrong? Um, and what would you do if you had been that teacher? Let me just click there. Um, Gemma, I'm going to ask you to let us know what comes in. So what did the teacher do, right or wrong? And what would you do if you were that teacher? So we've got quite a few comments around the negative language that's being used immediately, telling the student they're going to get zero for their assignment, 
the idea of it being quite critical. Um, the teacher is escalating the situation and um, starts off on the defensive, calling out in front of the whole class and not privately discussing the behaviour, quite yeah. humiliating. Yeah. This is a really good one. The teacher's already decided he's going to be a problem. <laughs> you should maybe praise and look for the good. Yeah. Um, talk to him away from his peer group. Singling out in front of others. Didn't yeah. give him a chance to settle in. Um, and the teacher didn't address what the student was doing and challenging. The challenging of it was quite abrupt. I would ask the student if they were all right. <laughs> Absolutely. It does seem quite negative, doesn't it? And does your heart go out to Caleb? Because mine does. Mine certainly does. Um, singled out the learner, which then caused their behaviour to escalate. If yeah. this was one of our learners, we'd have had a quiet conversation with him in private. Yeah. Um, a lot of comments around humiliation, being called out in front of peers. Yeah. Um, yeah very similar comments. Excellent. Thank you. And if any, as, as we go through the next couple of slides, if anything else pops into your head about that video, what what you would have done differently or what, if anything, the, the teacher did correctly or did right. Um, and anything that any comments on what we say in terms of sharing experiences. I'm going to run through some of the challenges that I've experienced to provide some context for the next activity. So the first of mine's being attendance. So please see any of these that you've already ticked off what that you put onto the Slido for us earlier. So when learners don't attend or even arrive on time, then that provides challenge for the teacher. Having to revisit important points before the class can move forwards does create issues for teachers and assessors and can impact on the progress of learning for everybody. So the next challenge I have is reluctance. Learners being reluctant to participate in classroom activities, but that also includes completing coursework or homework tasks and even formal assessment activities. That can be another big challenge for teachers. Next challenge takes reluctance further on to refusal and some learners who have refused to do what is asked or expected of them can be another frustrating challenge for teachers. And then moving on to learner relationships. So my experience has shown that learners and especially teenagers make friends, build relationships and have fallouts on a regular basis. And this can have a huge impact on progress in that learning environment. Threatening behaviour is my next example. Learners threatening, threatening each other or the teaching staff can obviously have a very negative impact on, on the learning experience env environment. And the next challenge I've included takes threats further to aggression or aggressive behaviour. This could be within the group or class of learners or towards the teaching staff. We'll need to refer to organisational policies and procedures for guidance related to what we should do. But hopefully the strategies we're going to explore next will help us to mitigate any behaviour becoming aggressive. And then I've got vandalism as the final challenge. Learners damaging property can create issues for teachers and disrupt learning. The level of damage can also cause different levels of concern. I've had experience of a learner with pyromania. And although this was more of a mental health issue, it did cause a number of issues when I was trying to teach the class. And many of the challenging behaviours we've talked about may be caused by mental health disorders. And we need to be mindful that we are professional educators and not necessarily trained as mental health practitioners. When challenging behaviour highlights the possibility of a mental health disorder, please get the support and guidance of appropriate professionals and follow your organisational policies and procedures for help and care for the learner and more importantly as well for yourself. OK, so when I worked for Bernardo's, we completed training on crisis intervention. Although this included physical restraining techniques, the focus was more on preventing es escalation to the requirement of needing that physical restraint. What we found was that when a service user or learner presented challenging behaviour, it was to gain attention from us. So the question that this then brought up was it was, is it attention seeking or atten attention needing? This is an area which has been explored across the globe. And now brings this next quote brings in why some children, and this applies to older learners too, experience has shown that whatever the behaviour is, it's coming from something specific. 
a concern or worry that they have, an issue in their personal or work life, or something related to their studies or the task they've been asked to complete in the classroom. Learners do tend to attend courses in classrooms with the intent to learn, and their behaviour is a way of communicating something with us. So finding out what the issue is and helping them to sort it out should help greatly. It's linked to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and if we want to create an environment for all learners which allows for learning to take place, we can't ignore this attention needing. Also, as our practice becomes more inclusive and more neurodiverse, neurodiverse, and I, I did see somebody brought up neurodiversity earlier, will be best place for success if we have a range of behaviour management strategies in our teacher toolbox. And I've included the link to the website that I'm quoting here uh, for your further reference and, and guidance and information. I'm just going to pause a second, Gemma, and ask if any questions or comments have come into the, the chat box recently. Yes, we've had a really interesting one, actually. So threatening or aggression, what is the distinction between the two? That's an interesting point, isn't it? Because a learner can be aggressive generally or they can be aggressive towards somebody and they can be threatening to somebody. Is there? A, yeah, I, I would imagine in my my scale and my experience that Threatening is is this is a step on from just being aggressive. I don't know how you feel, Gemma. Yes, I would say the same. And I think it's quite subjective, that isn't it? It's quite difficult mm. because what one person might find is particularly threatening, perhaps somebody else may not. Yeah. So that is quite an interesting one. I'm going to do a bit of research in the background and see if we can find a distinction between the two. And I'll pop something into the chat. Lovely. And I think use of language can be deemed as being um, aggressive or threatening, depending on what type of language is used. And if we think back to everybody will have every learner and everybody has a different home circumstances and, and, and support. And the norm at home isn't always the norm out in society. So if their norm um, is one way of reacting, acting and, and interacting with, with each other. If that's very, very different to your own, um, the subjectiveness comes in there and we'll have to decide, is that their norm and we need to teach them what is acceptable in a certain context and what's not? Or do we need to work with that learner more closely to find out what that aggression or threatening behaviour is? Is it something additional? Are they trying to tell us something? Or is it the norm for them and it's a learning situation that it's not the norm in society or in, in a classroom, for example? But let's keep this conversation going because this is just wonderful. OK, I'm now going to move on to some of the behaviour management strategies I was introduced to in the training I mentioned earlier. And all of them I've used in the 25 years or so since I did this training. As I'm running through this slide, please review what I'm saying and make a note of how you might have used or could use these in your teaching or classroom management or how you might be able to adapt and use them in the future. I'm going to ask for your input shortly, so please review these strategies as I talk about them and consider what strategies you use and which ones you could share. So the first strategy I'm going to talk about is how the teacher structures the learning environment where we choose to talk with a learner, whether we sit or stand, who we sit next to, all impact on the environment we create. Consider how you create that safe learning environment needed for learner success. Do you set a warm, friendly tone or set a colder, business-like, authoritative tone? And I think that tone was more evident in that video we've just watched. OK, the second relates to ignoring harmless behaviour, as this can help to withhold the reinforcement of the, that the learner gets from our attention. We must remember, however, that along with ignoring the undesired behaviour, we must include praise for any appropriate behaviour. Prompting is also important, so signalling to a learner to begin a desired behaviour or stop an inappropriate action can be done verbally by giving an instruction or non-verbally with a glance or a nod. And this simple non-critical direction can be given when the learner needs support or help to move on to the next step. 
So a bit like praise, affection can help increase a learner's self-esteem. If the challenge in behaviour is becoming, coming from a, an area of insecurity, fear or anger about something, an additional shot of affection and caring may be what they need in order to cope with the problem at hand instead of them going to pieces. Uh, a simple expression for or an appreciation of a student can assist them in gaining or regaining self-control. We do need to be careful that we don't overstep professional boundaries here, though. Simple praise about how a learner has done something, such as a tidy um, set of notes or creative notes, written work, or how they've done something well, would be appropriate in the classroom. So we all do need help at times, and in education, we probably call this scaffolding. But when we know or notice that a learner isn't able to complete a task without some assistance, we can provide this for them to allow them to overcome hurdles and, and on to success. So the only additional point I'd like to add here is that the help mustn't be given in a way that might offend the learner or show them up in front of their peers, as that would be detrimental. Tact is key here. The learner should know that you've provided the help, but this should be done thoughtfully, be di diplomatic and discreet. So non-verbal interventions can also be really useful. These incorporate a range of techniques, and this includes proximity and touch control. Often the mere fact of having the teacher close by can be calming, but this safe and supportive working relationship needs to be nurtured and professional. Touch can also be a powerful intervention, but again, professionalism and the maintenance of personal boundaries is key. Know your learners and what they need. A simple hand on the shoulder can provide the assistance a learner needs, but teachers should check what their organisational policies are for this before instigating any personal contact interventions. Remember the power of a smile, a nod or a head um, or a head shake or thumbs up. You know, anything nonverbal can really help you to manage the behaviour and set those classroom expectations. Redirecting the learner or changing the activity slightly may be sufficient to change the behaviour of one or more learners in a very quick and easy step. Using distraction or diversion can move energy and attention to something more positive and productive and de-escalate things when needed. As learners' behaviour escalates and their ability to make rational decisions decreases, it might be necessary to provide some direct guidance. Directive statements tell learners what is expected, but remember to do this in a polite manner. The type of statement ranges from making requests to stating rules and issuing commands. But remember, it's not what you say, it's often the way that you say it too. And then finally, taking some time out to a neutral, safe area can reduce stimulation and help learners to calm down if needed and regroup. If a task or activity is causing an issue to a learner, some time away from it, doing something just as constructive, can allow some space and time to revisit it at a later point, something we all need to do sometimes. There are also additional strategies teachers can use to manage behaviour in their learning environments, such as peer support, differentiated activities, grouping learners appropriately, and of course, allowing an element of control in the work and activities the learners complete depending on their individual circumstances. OK, I'm going to pause again, see what's coming, if anything, in the chat while I've been going through those. Lots, Helen. There's lots coming in the chat. So I'll, I'll try and paraphrase through some of them. Um, yep. If we do miss anybody's comments, I'm sorry. Hopefully I'll get to them all. Um, so we've had um, working closely with parents and other professionals involved with the learner and sharing information. Um, collaborating on strategies and maintaining open communication channels to ensure consistency. Yeah. Anticipating and preventing challenging behaviours by identifying triggers and implementing strategies to minimise them, I guess, before they arise. Yeah. Positive reinforcement like praise, rewards or privileges when the learner exhibits appropriate behaviour. Yeah. Um, we've had a comment about consistency there and how that can be hard when different teachers with different approaches are working with the same student and that could be used against teachers yes in certain circumstances yeah um, so standardized approach in a team of teachers is, is really useful isn't it targeted intervention another one about positive language good one there about needing to be aware of 
cultural norms regarding communication. Yes, absolutely. But then we've got a really interesting one, and I hope you don't mind me singling you out a little bit, Tracy. Um, <laughs> but Tracy says these are all great for face to face, but our teaching's mainly online. Oh, interesting challenge that one, I think, isn't it? That does sound a se- like a session for our next professional development. It week. does indeed. <laughs> yes. Um, teaching and model strategies for self-regulation, mindfulness, deep breathing, calm down corner, like you've just suggested there, Helen. Yeah. Um, positive body language and facial expressions and your tone of voice. Check out their individual learning plan in advance and be aware of their needs. Yeah. We haven't actually said anything about ground rules as well. And I think having the students and learners involved in setting the, the expectations for the classroom um, and even the um, the outcomes, if anybody breaks any of those sort of ground rules, agreed ground rules with, with each other would, would be really useful because if you can refer to back to a set of expectations that they have set, well, um, that's really useful rather than you being the teacher and you being the, you know, the instigator and, and police of, of these rules. Yes, there's just been a comment in there actually saying some adult learners prefer a classroom agreement. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And if you don't set these agreements at the start, then then what are the expected norms? What you know, what 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 do the students know about what they're supposed to be doing and not doing? OK, we're going to move on now to sharing some more ideas. So we've got a jam board set up for this. I am um, hope I put the, the link to it in at the beginning of the chat, Gemma. So I'm just going to see if, if you've got it handy. Can you pop it back in again? So if you haven't used Jamboard before, I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like. So it's going to end up like a, a PDF of everybody's ideas all brought together. And that's what the Jamboard will actually look like. When you click on the link, it has this control panel on the left hand side. And then you'll, if you click on where the arrow is pointing, that's the sticky note bit. You therefore choose your colour sticky note you want, type on your idea uh, and click save. And it'll pop your, your sticky note onto the Jamboard. If you're unable to access the Jamboard, hopefully the lovely Gemma will be able to capture any ideas that you put into the chat um, and, and have them on the Jamboard. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over um, to the actual jam board and hopefully we've got lots of people in this already please um start putting your answers in so it's a case of clicking on the sticky note bit if you click on that i'm just going to keep sharing my machine as if i was going to do it i'm going to choose pink and i'm going to say um targeted support for example um just to demo how to pop it on there, I'm going to click save and it'll pop that onto there. Once I've decided I've finished, I'm just going to click cancel and then I'm going to move my sticky note to wherever I want it on the board. If you've put one on and haven't typed on it yet, just double click on it. It will let you type on it. So this is a case of you sharing your ideas. Thank you for some buttons. Just put the learner agreements on there. Please put your ideas that you have used and work. Um, for different students, but I mean, as, as much detail as you can with, with anonymity, of course. So consistency, absolutely, across your own class, in your own room and, or at your own setting. Um, I'm guessing that we could say that some of these we would be able to apply to virtual learning, to online sessions as well. So setting expectations, getting the students to say this, you know, cameras on, off, uh, participate uh, in this way, that way, you know, whatever way it is. But um, for people who do teach virtually, I would really like you to figure out how we could adapt these um, and they could be used as in a virtual classroom. So consistency and using praise, variable tones of voice, absolutely. Um, consistent and transparent communications, having some kind of three, three strikes approach. Um, forced choices like this one. Put your phone, yeah, uh, put your phone in your bag or on my desk. Yeah, brilliant. Give them a choice. But the, the idea being it's the same outcome. You get, you get off your phone sort of thing. Uh, anything coming in the chat that we haven't got on here yet, Gemma? Uh, no, the ones that have came up, I've popped on already, Helen. If any more brilliant. come in, I will pop them on for you. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Walk and talk sometimes, just getting a little bit of... Uh, distance from the learning environment for, for five or ten minutes and a walk and talk is a, is a really good idea. 
I do feel that learners do feed off us as teachers. And if we get stressed um, and annoyed, it will have a negative impact on how the student or the learner um, responds back to us. So the point about keeping control of your own emotions is is, is brilliant. And um, be aware of how you're talking, how, how annoyed you're getting. Take a deep breath uh, and a step back and model the behavior that you want the student to have don't don't join them in their in their frustration or anger or aggression so that's a, a really good point high expectations absolutely uh, i think respect is a really good one but sometimes i mean i've had in, in in my bernardo's days i used to have to talk about what showing respect to each other was what what does respect mean because it means different things to different people so Yes, students need to, or learners need to be on the correct course. Modeling British values is a really good one and embedding that in because, we, you know, um, we know that Ofsted will always want to see that in, in the learning environment, no matter what it is. So thank you. So, yes, signposting. So, you know, oh, just two more activities or one more activity in this break time can can be just just enough to to, to break the ice and um help the student get through or the learner get through that next piece of work. Uh, closely with parents and anybody else who works with um, with the learner as well. Uh, I had a lot of work with, uh, a lot of dealings with social workers and uh, probation officers as well in, in previous roles. So working with other professionals and mental health professionals is, is really, oh, what are the three Ps? Demonstrate the three Ps. Um, I'm going to make up P's of my own now, but uh, whoever pop, who demonstrate the three P's, please explain to everybody what your three P's are. Well, do like a self-fulfilling prophecies. I'm just reading through them as, as they're coming on here. And I'm guessing that's Gemma moving them all around into, into some kind of, oh, professionalism, politeness and positivity. Lovely. Love, love the three P's. Thank you for that. Um, uh, yes, if if you uh, thinking back to that video we watched earlier, if if the teacher was more positive and it it was as if the self fulfilling prophecy was that learner having to be sent to, to the office for for whatever reprimand that was going to be, so so excellent. If if you you show that you've got the confidence in the people that you're working with that they can behave and don't have to. Um, go back to what behavior that's challenging that that's a really good point um what about lateness or students not attending what kind of what kind of mitigation or strategies have people used to uh to catch people up and things things like um missing a missing a, a really important previous point and not being able to move forward how do you manage that in the classroom environment. So signposting, absolutely, yes. Oh, we're getting so many good ideas. Is there a reason instead of why? Absolutely. Thank you for that one. Classroom agreement, showing respect. Um, consistency is really important. And also fairness across everyone as well. Consistency across the whole group of learners as well you will be differentiating the support you provide and you will be helping more uh, some learners more than others but it's 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 being tactful with that isn't it and not not making it clear that some students are getting um, inverted commas easier work than than others because they're not at the same uh, level as some of them so recognizing lateness and rewarding punctuality and that reward doesn't have to be something um tangible that reward can be praise or um get to do something that they like to do or they get to choose what the next activity is or whatever it is that the reward doesn't have to cost anything it can just be something that you know those learners will be um will be appreciative of so Welfare, men, welfare mentors coming in there and working with tutors to improve attendance. It's hard because if, if, if um, my experience has shown that if, if the support for attendance isn't at home, then even trying to get 
others involved in encouraging learners to to attend and get there on time and do the work um, because parents or um, carers haven't needed or felt they needed to do it themselves. So it's it's breaking a, a cycle as well sometimes, isn't it, of of lateness and lack of effort and lack of attendance. So brilliant. Thank you. So anything else come in the chat, Gemma, that we haven't mentioned yet? That's I think I've captured most of them, Helen. There's a couple uh -huh. of little comments. Um, somebody says, um, Caroline says, I agree that in order for the three Ps to work, you really do need trust in your team. Yeah. Um, important to ask the student why they're late for all of the reasons that you've just mentioned, Helen. Yeah. Um, the use of reasonable adjustments where applicable or appropriate. Yes. Yes. Um, teachers sharing and asking advice from each other. They can also share particular student needs with other teachers so a student can be taught and managed well. Yes. And that this consistency, nice... that consistency across colleagues that the students and you know, the learners need to know about as well is really useful. Go on, sorry. This last one's a lovely one. Pair learners with an accountability partner who can remind each other to join classes on time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any questions coming into the to the chat box? Not so far. Just some really good contributions to the discussion. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody. We will keep that open and we will share it with everybody so that ev you know everyone can see um, to see that after the event. We will we're able to share that as a PDF. So that's brilliant. OK, we've got just a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to go back to confidence levels. Thank you so much for everybody to everybody for participating today. I've got that. I've got a second. Um, uh, poll to send if I can get teams working. So bear with me a second. That's that's is that showing now? Gemma, is my poly showing at all? I can't see the poly, Helen. I can see the slide. Everybody, if you if you can't see it, please do just pop it in the chat. It does sometimes have these days where it doesn't want to do as we ask. Yeah, it's been a bit funny, isn't it? It's strange. Okay. I'm going to. There's definitely an increase in confidence levels, though. That's lovely to see. So we've got a lot of eights, nines, a couple of sevens. Brilliant. So it does seem that people have uh, improved. And um, if you found that you were already at a nine and you're still at a nine, I don't see that as being an issue at all. That's consolidated that what you're doing is right. And sometimes professional development is just about getting some clarification that you are doing a good job, you are doing the right job and um, in terms of the subject matter and that you should feel confident that you do know what you're doing and, and how to do it. Is anything else coming through questions wise just before we, we wrap up? No, no questions at the moment. OK, so finally, please do take a few moments to complete our feedback form. We appreciate your feedback and we, we do use it to help us make improvements. And also, please note that a digital credential is available for this session on request. Uh, a, digital, a digital credential is a portable representation of a certificate that you can add to your professional development portfolio. And we've mapped the criteria for this session to the DFE and ETF professional standards. So if you would like a digital credential, please let us know on the feedback form by, by providing your name and email address and giving consent for us to share those with Learning Vault and they are our digital credentials provider for the sole purpose of sending you with the digital badge. Uh, we're nearly finished. We've got just a couple of minutes left. So I'm just going to uh, pause here for a second to see if anybody would like to um, ask any questions or give us any comments before we, we say farewell to everybody today. I've also popped the link to that um, form in the chat as well in the event that anybody can't access the QR code. So you should still be able to click the link. Brilliant. I'm just going to read through the questions now. Waiting, waiting for the online version of this, which is wonderful. That's what we're obviously going to have to plan for our next one. Yes, the session's recorded and you'll get the um, access to the recording on our YouTube channel where we publish all of our 
um, professional development sessions, but also we'll share the slides and the Jamboard activity. So yes, everything will um, will come through to yourselves. Any other questions, comments? Hi. Hello. Yes, go, go Helen. ahead, yes. How are you? My name is Bolatito. I, I logged in, but I've been unable to um, kind of interact with everything that's been done. Oh, dear. But I've really enjoyed the session and I've taken on board what has been said. I agree with almost everything on on this um, platform today. So I just okay. want to say thank you um, for your for your um, for your session. Yes, it's been thank wonderful. Oh, that's um, great. Yes, that's all I have to say. And do you mention something about the certificate? Yes, it, it, you get the digital badge. That's what it'll yes. look like, Exploring Behaviour Management Strategies. Um, we just need your email address and your okay. cons consent to share it with our provider that, that, you know, that, that actually gives these digital badges. So if you... Um, if you can use the link that either either the link that Gemma put into the chat to the to the Microsoft form, or okay. scan that QR code that you can see on the on the screen now. Gemma's just popped that link in again. So okay. so yes, that's how you'd let us know um, that you'd like the badge. Yes. Okay, I will surely do that. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Brilliant. Thank, thank, you. thank you for your input. And thank you to everybody for for your time, input, effort, participation in the in the session today. It's really um, valuable to for you to share your ideas as well as hearing from each other. So. Um, Yes, you should be able to, to complete the feedback form after watching the recording. The recording won't necessarily be available today because it has to be downloaded and uploaded to the YouTube channel. So um, it might not be available today, but it'll be in the coming days. And same for the digital badge as well. It'll, they, they'll be coming out in, in the coming days because we're running sessions all week this week. So there's quite a lot um, of admin follow up for us to do, but... Um, we'll do it as quickly as we can. You request that digital badge by filling in the, the feedback form and putting your email address and, and consenting to us sharing your details with Learning Vault. They are our digital credentials provider. So you, we do have to get your permission to do that. We can't just say, give us your email. You have to let us know that we've got your permission to share. So... Thank you, everybody. Any further comments, any further feedback, please do share it with us. And any other ideas for further um, CPD sessions, we're always asking for, for input on what you'd like us to do. So um, thanks ever so much. If you've, if you've watched the recording, thank you for watching the recording as well. Thank you for taking out time. Um, really appreciate your time and effort. Uh, thank you and all the very, very, very best for the future.